Okay, let's get crazy. Let's get into some fun machine learning stuff. So I know this is what a lot of you have been waiting for, and it's so easy to get into. And so I want to first introduce you to super, super basic time series forecasting model. This is an additive model for those of you familiar. Um, but what they're really good at is taking information that has at least three years worth of data and forecasting the future. And so what people traditionally like to use these for are things like sales, churn, website traffic, um, temperature of regions. I mean, you name it, whatever kind of happens on a reoccurring basis. Granted, COVID-19 has really screwed up some of these models, right? Because we have never before seen the data that a pandemic has brought on before. So please keep that in mind. These are typically freakishly accurate. The This one I'm going to be sharing with you today is Facebook's open source model called Profit. Uh, it's incredibly simplistic. I have used a dozen plus other models, tried to um, make them as accessible as this, and I just haven't been able to accomplish it. So I just keep coming back to this profit model, and I hope you enjoy it. Um, to get things started, what I would suggest you do, especially for you marketers and you SEOs, is to go to one of your Google Analytics accounts and to export at least three years worth of data. Do this and export it into a CSV. And what I want you to do then is to go into that CSV and I want you to delete the extra headers you don't need. And above the date, just put capital D lowercase s. I know it seems silly, but I promise you it'll save you a lot of time and headache. I tried to do this other ways. Modifying the CSV is the easiest way to get this model going. So within your CSV, again, delete the extra headers. Just add capital D lowercase s and then capital Y for the B column header where you have the metrics that are the time series metrics that you're trying to forecast. Um, and so, yeah, let's get going. It's super fun. Save it like that. Make sure it's all cleaned up. Oh, and also with um, the GA data, scroll down to the very bottom and it aggregates all of that B column over time. Delete that extra cell. That's just the cumulative number of the B column. Get rid of that. And just have, again, the time series and then the time series data in that B column. And now you are ready to rock. This is so much fun. So all you're going to do is you're going to make a copy of this notebook that I built here. And so what we're going to do, I get so excited. Um, okay. So we are going to just start running these cells. So what I typically do is I click in to the first code cell. You can click into one of the cells up here. It doesn't really do anything when you're running tech cells. It, you know, these things work when you're running the code blocks or the code cells. So I typically just click into the first code cell and then I do that shift return, right? And what this first block is doing is it's generating an upload option for me to import my data. And so what I'm going to do is I'm then going to choose my file. It opens up all my junk. Um, and I'm going to do oh, sample traffic. Sorry about that. Um, all right, so data is uploaded. So exciting. So this is website traffic um, of a friend of mine, mine's website. They uh, definitely got impacted by COVID, so this should be interesting. But this is their all website traffic over the last three years. So if you're doing SEO, you can change this to just organic. Um, I kind of like to keep it general to all to see what it predicts happening in the future. I don't know, play around with it, it's super fun. Um, so we have that, and what I'm gonna change here is this next code cell is gonna read what you imported. And this is super important. You have to modify 
this part right here to reflect what you uploaded. So they need to talk to each other. So I need to change this to sample-traffic, okay? And then once you have that, that CSV, it's the exact same as I uploaded. Again, shift return, now it's Reddit. And we're gonna verify that by looking at the head. So df.head looks at the top five rows of data. Beautiful, right? So I see it's uploaded, it's uploaded successfully. I'm so proud of it, I'm so excited, let's do this. I just keep shift return, shift enter. Um, this is kind of an extra thing. Um, this just tells you what types of data are within your data frame. So here we're using Panda's uh, data frame to read the information. This is more information you need. Um, we are going to drop any extra columns. So, and in this case, we don't really have extra columns, but we're just going to clarify. This isn't a big deal. Um, we're going to look at the head again same thing, convert to a date time. This is really important. So we are changing that DS into a date time within the data frame. It now reads that it's an actual time series data input. And now we're gonna um, make the model and fit it to your data, it's so exciting. Uh, and so we did that and let's make a future data frame. Again, all I'm doing is shift return, shift return, shift return. It doesn't even matter if you don't know what some of these things are, I don't either. Um, this part is kind of important though. So um, this is where you're gonna be forecasting the future. And so this, where you see 30, that's predicting 30 days out. Something really important to know about these additive models is that you can predict farther out than 30 days, but it's going to be less and less accurate. That's why a lot of these larger corporations and data science professionals have these on a rolling basis. And so it might only predict maybe three days into the future. And then it accounts for the last three days. Do you know what I mean? So it kind of rolls, it's a rolling model. Um, but here we're just gonna kind of, let's just go with what we have here. We're gonna predict 30 days out into the future. You can do 15, you can do 10, whatever. We're gonna run this 30 as it is. Oh, and see, sometimes you run into problems. This is quite common, but, oh, okay. So within my data frame, within that time series, there is a null cell or two or three, whatever, within my data. So it's a good lesson. Um, let me see. Uh, don't look at all my stuff. I'm just kidding. Uh, all right, so let's open with Excel. Bring this one over to you. All right, so it says that within this DS, there are some null values. This is all looking good to me. Maybe it's just these additional columns. So we can just delete these and see if this solves the problem. This is very common. Most of machine learning is um, just what we would call data munging, data cleaning. Again, I think these are all deleted anyways, but I don't know, it's super weird. All right, let's save that. Yep, and we're gonna try this again. So what I would do, run this, re-upload my sample traffic. I'm gonna read it in. I actually don't even need to do some of these next ones. Sure, we'll clean it up, doesn't matter. Um, make sure it has the top five cells. Yep, yep, yep. Again, shift return, shift return. Make the model. That looks good.
That looks good. Let's predict the future. <laughs> so much fun, isn't it? Okay, so this is awesome. So let me walk you through what we're looking at here. So this is after the model has ran and it's predicting the future. I can do a follow-up to see how good this is. But what we like to look at here is um, the Y hat. So what we're going to look at, let me see how I can scroll over. Oh, here we go. All right. So if I scroll over, this Y hat within this profit model, it's the prediction for the corresponding date. And so each row you see here are the following 30 days. And so what this predicts is that to actually today that it thinks because today has not ended it thinks today will be around you know 20 some people tomorrow will be 30 monday um tuesday will be 32 right and what's really powerful about this particular notebook and this particular model is this doesn't just account for seasonality i mean it gets very very granular in terms of weekly monthly U.S. holidays. It's incredibly savvy in terms of accounting for fluctuations in our United States calendar year. So um, if you are within the United States, this is really savvy for that. I think there are modifications for other countries as well, um, and I can look into that if um, some of you are interested. But for the purpose of sort of United States data, this is what we would see here. And so these are our 30 day predictions, this Y hat value. Um, oh, sorry. And then to show you, so it also shows you like the highs and the lows. And so it'll show you what it thinks sort of the upper, the weekly, the lower, the lower yearly. It gives you ranges for all this information. We've been, we've actually been seeing a ton of this shit with COVID predictions. And so the following graphs will not be unfamiliar to you that I have baked into some of this. So this is the forecast. Um, and you can see it's sort of trending down, which isn't great, but again, COVID. Um, and then here's the yearly, weekly, monthly trends. These are really neat graphs because you can sort of see that, oh my gosh, every, you know, um, let's see. January, February, it peaks for this particular site, which makes sense. Um, Tuesdays are the best days uh, for the website traffic here. And again, you can sort of look at these monthly trends. That's so interesting. And so right after the new year and then late summer, this peaks. Um, this is really neat. So you can see you can pick a, a forecast date in the past to evaluate how well this model performs overall on old data. And so what it does is let's pick a date in the past. Um, let's actually do, let's do before COVID. Let's do um, February 1st of this year and see, and this will now rerun the model and it will predict how accurate this current model does for if it deleted the time series data after February and predicted it. So again, shift return, shift enter. We're going to remove the data that, that occurred before that start date. Sounds great. Um, again, you're just shift return, shift return. Let's see how it does. I hope it does well. All right, there's the predictions. Let's plot it. Okay, merge with the actual forecasts. And let's evaluate the results. Again, I'm just doing shift return, shift return. Okay, so um, all right, so the blue lines is the forecast. This is interesting. <laughs> Okay, you can see it. There was a big spike April, around April, far exceeded the forecast. And then it kind of sunk below and went back to the forecast. It's just, this is kind of a fun way um, to read it. 
again, it's not perfect. It's a way for you to sort of evaluate the model and how closely fit it is to the forecast. Um, you would need to add additional data visualization to get numerical information as to how accurate or inaccurate this is. You could easily add that with something like um, NumPy and uh, I think Psychic Learn has some really great stuff for you to do that. I have not added that here um, because the primary purpose of this model is just to get you going with a very, very basic uh, prediction forecast. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it's fun. I am obsessed with this model in particular. It has just, as mosquito, it has just proven to be so fun in terms of predicting data for clients and just for me to play around with. I don't know, this stuff is awesome. So I hope this is useful to you in some way, shape or form. Again, um, remember all of the previous videos, you can export this in PDF form for clients. You can um, kind of follow up with some other fun stuff as well. So keep me posted on how you like this one in particular. It is one of my favorites and I will see you soon.